Hello, it's Illyrian, and I wanted to make a quick video to show you guys how I am making some masks for me and my friends and family with all of this, like, pandemic craziness going on. Here in Louisiana, stuff is starting to reopen already, and a lot of businesses are strongly recommending or requiring individuals to have the mask in order to walk in and do anything inside. This actually started because my mom was out of work for several weeks because the business where she works completely closed down because it's a non-essential business. When she got called back into work, these were the masks that they were given. It's not the best material, it's not a plain cotton, it feels and looks very cheap. These ties have not had the edges finished whatsoever. She tried to wear it for work one day and she came home and told me after that it was very difficult to work with it. It was hard to breathe. It made her face very, very hot. She had trouble wearing it with her glasses. It was causing a lot of problems. So she was like, I know you were already planning on making masks, but could you maybe do it a little faster so that I can have something with for work. I said, sure. I did some research. Three different people that I was already following on YouTube had made videos as to how they were making their masks. Bernadette Banner, uh, Angela Clayton, and Yaya Han. And I, I took tips from kind of each one of them. I will link the appropriate videos in the doobly-doo for you guys. But I also did some outside research from that and developed my own pattern. I traced it onto paper first and then put it on cardboard because cardboard is easier to trace. It's a very simple shape and it's got space for two pleats. It's curved on the upper and lower edges so that it can curve with the face a little bit better. To stick with only woven fabrics, you really wanna stick with natural fabrics because they're going to be more comfortable on the face. They're gonna breathe better. They're gonna be cooler. They're gonna stand up to the constant washing better. It is recommended that you wash these masks after every single wear. I'm going to find a way to scan it and make it available digitally. I'm going to provide it free to my patrons. So if you are subscribed to me on Patreon, you will have access to the file for this without any extra charge. It'll be available otherwise for like $3 on my website. I'll tell you guys what my process is uh, so that if you would like to draft it yourself, you can. So the pattern that I started out with after looking at a couple of other people's uh, starting points was a nine inch by six inch rectangle. There are two half inch pleats, which you mark it as an inch because there's a fold right in the middle. From the top and the bottom edges, I measured in an inch and a half and then marked a line up or down an inch, marked a line, and so there's a three quarter inch gap between the two pleats. Just so that way they would be evenly spaced from the top and the bottom. It looks a little nicer, it feels a little nicer. Wait, I didn't add seam allowance or anything. Traced it on fabric, ran my first mock-up, and it worked for the most part, um, but the edges, the long edges were a little awkward. So I then used um, a French curve. I have these two. I specifically used this one. You can use any French curve if you don't have a French curve. Any hard edged object that's got an oblong sort of curve to it can work for you. I measured down from the original top edge three quarters of an inch and I just I did the best I could to make the curve even on both sides. I kind of like eyeballed it at first with the French curve on one side and then tried to match what markings I had used on one side to the other. When I trace this to cut it out, because this does not have seam allowances built in, I trace this exact pattern and leave half an inch in between so that um, there's space and I use that extra space as seam allowance. Basically, I'm following whatever line I have traced as my seam line. I leave these flush and flat. Now I'm gonna show you guys the process of making the mask. I have pre-washed and dried all of these fabrics. These are all plain weave cottons. Mom requested that I use this really cute kitty cat fabric that says meow on it. It's got all kind of different breeds and types of cats on it. I'm gonna make two for myself and one for my boyfriend out of these spoopy fabrics that I've got. So I'm making one for myself out of the spider webs. They've got like this glittery bit on them. It's really neat. I have this magic card fabric as well. I used both of these in a corset last year and I thought that 
a mask might be another good small project to utilize some of this. My boyfriend has requested that I use this same material for him. He's getting red lining because that is his favorite color and I am getting purple in both of mine. Got my iron heating to the hottest setting. I'm just gonna give everything a quick press to make sure there's no wrinkles or creases. They're just out of the dryer, so they should be mostly smooth, but I'm just gonna take that extra step to boost my quality. And also I'm gonna go through and pick off any stray bits of thread or lint because I noticed some clinging to the red and also to clip off these like frayed bits from the edges just to like clean up the fabric as it is. Uh, once I've got them all pressed, I'm gonna go ahead and trace off my pattern onto the wrong sides of the fabric. Since these are prints, they do have a lighter background so the pencil should be okay to see. If the pencil doesn't show up, I will switch to Taylor's chalk and um, I will, you'll see me using the chalk instead of the pencil, so. Yeah, and I'm also gonna go ahead and cut out some of the interfacing as well. I'll need one layer per mask. A good press with a hot iron will make the fabric nice and smooth. Once you're happy with that, you can lay down your pattern and start tracing. You'll wanna play with the placement a little if you're using a print because you may prefer a particular part of the image to be centered. Once you've got it placed, you can trace the pattern at least twice as you need two layers of fabric for each mask. Though of course, you can take the route I did with some of my others and use a different fabric for the inside than for the outside, for like a pop of color or something. Remember that my pattern has no seam allowance, so I'll be leaving extra space of at least a quarter inch along the long curved edges. And the short edges will remain flush to the pattern line, because they'll be folded in later for the elastic channels. I mistakenly cut along my pattern trace for about an inch and had to piece on a scrap, but it isn't noticeable in the final mask. If you're using a non-fusible interfacing, you may want to leave more than a quarter inch seam allowance on the long edges and trace your interfacing larger than the mask panel. You can go ahead and stitch that to the wrong side of one of your panels once you've got everything cut. If you're using a fusible interfacing, you can press that to the wrong side of one of your fabric panels now, as you see me doing here. Once you've got your interfacing on, you can pin your two mask panels together with the right sides together. I'm taking my time to pin directly along the pattern trace, which is now my seam line, and I'm being sure to match the line on both pieces as I pin. Matching the seam lines as you're pinning makes the pinning more accurate in my experience, and it takes away that stress that can be caused by edges of pieces getting wonky and cutting. Once you've got that pinned together, you can stitch it in place. I'll be using the default seam settings on my machine for this and back stitching at either end. Pro tip, do not sew over your pins. A lot of people will do it to make it go faster, but you can actually cause serious damage to your pins, your needle, your machine, or even your fingers if you're not careful. I've been retraining myself to remove my pins as I sew. Once that's sewn together, you can clip your threads. And then I'm giving this a good press on both sides. Once it's pressed, I'll clip the seam allowances down and flip the right sides out. Might take some wiggling. I'm then going to carefully press the seams flat to make the whole thing nice and crisp. And apparently I'm gonna be sure to block the entire shot with my iron. <laughs> Great film technique there, hun. <laughs> I also gave it a little press in the middle to ensure that the whole thing is as flat as possible because this will make the pleating easier. For the pleating, you're going to bring back your pattern and mark the ends of the pleat lines at either short edge of the mask. You can do this with pencil, chalk, or with little clips from your shears, whatever works best for you. Mark all four lines on both edges and connect them straight across with your ruler. I went a little ham with marking the first one because I wasn't sure how well the pencil would show, but it ended up being fine. Once they're marked, you can start to fold. 
Fold the top portion back at the first line and press it. It takes a lot of pressing to set these in place, so take your time with it. I even sprayed and steamed it several times for each fold. And give it a good press from both sides. Then fold that first crease down to the second line and press again. Now you're going to repeat those steps here, so fold back along the third line and press. Now fold that crease you just made down to line 4, and you guessed it, press. <laughs> As I said, it took several minutes to press this well enough, and my mask was actually so hot by the time I got it right that I had to use the cardboard pattern as a spatula to get it off the ironing board. <laughs> it should be nice and crisply pleated, but if you're not confident in your pressing for the pleats, you can stitch them down along the short edges. If you're happy with your pressing job though, you can skip this step if you want. Now, I don't show this next part very well, you're going to take those shorter edges and fold them in toward the back of the mask by about a half inch and stitch them down as close to the raw edge as you can. I'm using this dull plastic children's needle to thread my 8 to 10 inch long quarter inch wide elastic through the channels. And there are two ways that you can finish this off once you've got your elastic in place. You can overlap the ends and stitch them together. If you do this method, I would recommend hand stitching. It gives you much better control. And you don't have to worry about the stitches being super pretty because you're gonna hide the ends in the channel once you're done sewing this. Alternatively, you could just tie the two ends of the elastic together in a knot. It won't fit inside the channel, but you can just position it right at the top or bottom of the channels. I would suggest leaving at least an extra inch of elastic if you're going to use this method. And there you have it! Isn't it cute? Rawr. <laughs> That's how I made uh, the masks. Um, I've got like three more that I gotta get done. But thank y'all so much for watching. Hope that this video helped. I hope that my pattern instructions help, um, or at least give you a starting point for designing and creating your own masks at home out of whatever material you have. Now, this is something to keep in mind. Fabric masks like this are non-medical grade. They are not meant for preventing you from catching things. They are better at preventing you from spreading something to someone else. But wearing it for both purposes, if as many people as possible commit to wearing them, will help prevent the spread of any sort of disease, bacterial or viral, and it helps reduce the risk of those who are more susceptible. Even if you haven't had symptoms, you could simply be an asymptomatic carrier of the virus. Even if you don't get sick from this, you could have it and pass it to someone who could end up being a lot worse off if they get sick. So wearing this is the smallest thing that you can do. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this helped. Uh, be sure to check the description for those other videos that I mentioned at the beginning and do your own research. I highly, highly encourage. Don't take my method and my tips as the ipso facto only way to do this. There are so many ways to go about making masks. Anyway, I think that's about it for today. Thanks again for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, share this with those that you think would also enjoy this video or would enjoy these tips. And if you liked what you see and you want to stay the most up to date on every time I post a new video, be sure to hit subscribe. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Keep aiming, loves. Was, um,